foot one, freshman number 30, Michael Brown. And at guard for the Hoyas, five foot 10, junior number 10, Joey Brown. At center for Providence, six foot eight junior from Friendly High School in Fort Washington, Maryland, number 42, Dickie Simkin. And the center for the Hoyas will be six foot 10, freshman number 50, Othella Harrington. Forward for the Friars, six foot seven, senior number 32, Tony Turner. And at forward for the Hoyas, six foot six, junior number 22, Robert Churchwell. And the other forward for the Friars will be six foot eight, junior from Dunbar High School in Washington, D.C., number 34, Michael Smith. And at forward for the Hoyas, six foot 10, freshman number 40, Dwayne Spencer. Rick Barnes, 97 wins in his Providence career, looking for his first conference road win this year. And John Thompson now with 476 wins in his 21 years on the Hoya bench. We'll be right back with the tip-off. It's the Providence Friars and the Georgetown Hoyas at Big East Conference Basketball, coming up after these words from our local stations. It's interesting because that's normally the way you think Providence would like to play the game. Exactly. Collapse the zone right here. Very, very tight. Forcing it out to the perimeter. Tony Turner up. Long rebound. And look, Georgetown pounce on that. Three on two. The numbers see if they can convert. Pretty good transition, though, by Providence. Get back quickly. A long rebound. The other end of the floor is just as good as an outlet pass. Spencer. Hold on the shot, Michael Smith flashing out. And White Dinah along with Son Connor, if you can bring him up. We'd like all of you on stage right now if you could. Remember, Ted, any time 49% just is staggering when you know that the teams that you're playing against are hitting just about 50%, you have a long way to go. And that's why they have to earn everything defensively and hit the, re hit the boards as well as they do. Thank goodness for them that they do rebound the, floor, the ball as well as they do. That's where they lead the conference. And Georgetown's the second rebounding team for the Big East. The difference in the defense, Providence last in the league in opponent shooting. Georgetown is first, and that's how the Hoyas make up for their own poor shooting. And that trip, the trap, full court trapping. It's not a, an aggressive trap running all over the floor, but when the ball is in a spot where you can double, you can release as a defender and look for double team. Step in by Harrington after a screen. And Smith coming out on the floor now to play Spencer. What Smith wants to do is just stay in tight where he is right there. Good help across. Oh, wow. Pretty trick by Harrington away from two defenders. But yeah. Simpkins is going to get a hand on that one. That's the thing, Jimmy, that watching Harrington as a freshman is so impressive. He knows how to score at the block, and he knows how to get fouled. Exactly. And there is a good example of him getting away from the play, too, to get a shot off. The pressure still mounting up for Georgetown. And Joey Brown is fouled. So a quick start. Six points for the Hoyas and a trip to the line for Brown. Well, we talked about it right on the top, how important it would be for Providence to control the basketball against the traps, against the relentless pressure that Georgetown continues to put on the floor, especially when you're playing on the road. Franklin Western. Is in now, quick change for Turner. Providence held situation, obviously Abdullah feeling fine, he is starting. Franklin Western says his ankle's fine. Troy Brown saying before the game, his ankle about 75%. First seven points of the game go to Georgetown. Horton to get a good one right here. Almost burying himself in an early hole. Western. And Smith got up, kept that ball alive. 
not only does it go after the ball when it's up high, but so quick to get down low to catch it off the quick bounce. Good penetration. Kick back, missed three by Brown. Good challenge there. Churchwell at the rebound. Joey Brown. Harrington, and he is fouled. Not a bad job of running the floor by Harrington, getting down the floor, beating all the big men to a good spot on the offensive glass. Joey Brown forcing the action, getting his shot off, but he realizes that he has pretty good balance. And there's the big man finishing it off. I tell you, it's been interesting to watch Georgetown this year, Jim. Push, push, push. Every chance they get. And then on the defensive end, continually everybody, everybody coming out. at you defensively. Othella Harrington, he is second in the league in the field goal number. He is third in the league in the points. And he's also second in rebounding, second to Michael Smith and the Friars. And he kept Georgetown in the game offensively Monday night. The guard was 21 points. That's an all-line back. Yep, sure is. Abdullah had crossed. You never, ever want to leave your feet as you're crossing the line. Especially if you have to come back or cross court like that. If you're going towards your own basket, it's one thing, but you know you've, that had trouble written all over. Six possessions now for Providence. Three missed shots, three turnovers. Need a stop right here. Brown leaning in. And he tipped it around, and Spencer with the long arms. Now, just the fact that Georgetown continues to go after the offensive glass. There's some fight going on as Smith and Harrington go out. Providence will get the ball. That's a very nice matchup when those two guys hook up. Chattering a little bit at one another. Get the feeling that uh, John might have run a few rebounding drills this week for his team after <laughs> what happened at the Garden. Let's see what happens down here on the defensive boards also. Pressure down full court and then back into an aggressive tight defense. Michael Smith in, looking for the whistles. There's the extra opportunity though. And finally Harrington out with it. Providence all over the basket but can't put it home. And then a forced pass. And Providence with a turnover. For a moment there that looked as if it was open but Abdullah closed it down pretty quickly. That never dragged the pivot court. A lot of people wanted the call. Simpkins and a foul. Jock is going to be called, reaching. There's a case where you have to remember who's playing behind you. Big guy stepping up to contend on the shot. Jock with the reach down for the foul. Now Michael Brown out. Rob Phelps in. Phelps and Forbes both had uh, some points for the Friars in their loss to Seton Hall on Tuesday night. Friars had a players only meeting after that game. Trying to, as they said, fight getting down on themselves when they get down in the ball game. And they're uh, in danger of that happening to them early right here as they finally get their first point on the board after three minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, sometimes those meetings do work out because you just get your frustrations out. You know that what really happens usually was when you hear guys in the voicing, maybe not even complaints, but their worries and concerns, at least you have that bonding, the unity after a meeting, you walk into the next game and hopefully everybody comes together as a group. They're trapped of their own right now. Oh, got the baseline on the sideline. Church well, and we've got a crash and a foul. As Georgetown crashing, Phelps got knocked down. John Jacques. Oh, excuse me, they called Harrington for the foul, his first. So our first timeout comes up with the Hoyas up 8-2. to two. Florida State non-conference at scores, and we'll have updates throughout our game today on that score. And a little trap again, no surprise, from Georgetown, and back into the zone. The changes for either team during the first timeout. To beat into Simpkins and he's fouled. That's going to be a, a second quick one on Harrington. Now Simpkins made the play before he caught the basketball because the ball went away from him. 
He caught a seam and a good look and really busted through the middle, and Harrington just wasn't ready for him to come that quickly. So an excellent play away from the ball, moving without it. So the inside force for the Hoyas picks up a second early foul. Michael Brown is back for Abdullah. What do you think about this, John Thompson? Now he's not employing the quick hook. A lot of coaches say, come over here, big boy, and sit down next to me. Exactly. Plenty of time, 15 and a half. Especially with the way Providence hits the, the glass, you would think that might pose a problem for him because he's obviously going to be in the middle of the lane most of the way. Where's that going, Ted? <laughs> Turnover. Now, what does Georgetown do defensively to protect Harrington, or do they try well, to? Well, they're in the zone, so that's a protection in itself, but I think that, and that's what you would normally do, get away from a man-to-man -man situation and go into a zone, but because of Providence being an active rebounding team, I think that could pose a problem. Nobody wants to get this ball across, do they? Wow. Good block. Joey Brown made a fine play just to try and save it, and then Franklin Wester gets the first Friar hoop. And this is a good move by Rick Barnes also, though. His team starting off slowly, get him up, play a little trap themselves, see if it picks them up offensively. Oh! oh and a big crash and a tip. Two Hoyas on the boards, Churchwell and Harrington. I guess it was Harrington's left hand who got it. Harrington does get credit for the tip, but we have another Georgetown foul. This is Joey Brown's first and the team's fourth. Now, Rick Barnes gets Troy Brown in the game. Out goes Simpkins. Providence uh, really was thin the other night when Western and the Troy Brown both went down with their injuries. Abdullah was out and Matt Alosa leaving the team early this week. Good job defensively again from Georgetown with the numbers. Pick it to the glass. Coach well. Did he ever get out in that lane? Not only did he run the floor well, but he got a great angle just veering off to his right a little bit to give him a good angle to the hoop. Oh, going to go the other way. Michael Brown call. Churchwell using the feet perfectly defensively. Here's the trap. Holding his ground. Brown just a little anxious to get through. Abdullah back now. So the real shuttle system employed here by Rick Barnes. Jock came down. Got caught. Up in the air, came down, hit the ground. It's a walk. Now it gives them an opportunity to stay with their full court trap, though. One of the keys to breaking the trap is obviously reading it. A tough way to do it right there is dribble it up quickly because you have a lot of free hands going at it. Well, you'd think, now that's how Providence can break it because they've got Phelps in the game and Forbes over there, a couple guys that the pass to show they can shoot it. And Smith trying to run that one down with Phelps. Both going after the ball, neither one of them coming up with it. Good effort, though, in the glass. Spencer is going to be called for traveling. And Smith had very good position also, but that's the right call. It happened before the, the contact. Michael Smith stepping in with the steps before he bumped into him. Well, now uh, Harrington goes out for the first time for Georgetown. Don Reed is in, so is Eric Miku. That's worked pretty well with Abdullah busting it up the floor. Stick with it until you run into problems. Michael Brown missed the three. Long rebound to Reed. Got some numbers now. See if they spread the floor. Pretty good defense again, though, by Providence getting back. Oh. Miku missed inside, got it back. Trying to get up through the big guys, can't do it. Lost. Out. Wow, both go up. That was Spencer and Smith both going at that one, contesting it. Not so sure Smith was open on that one. Just yeah. trying for the big shot. Yeah, this is going for the home run right Ooh. there. I don't know if it's a little tight to get that one through. Although Smith put his hand up to throw it. So as a guard, when you see the hand go up, you figure, well, give it a shot. And Kevin Millen in for the Hoyas. One thing Georgetown has defensively in their favor, when Abdul is on the floor, he has shown absolutely no inkling in the conference to shoot at all. So that helps him defensively. He's run the play. Exactly. Gives you a lot of freedom. 
especially in the zone, to run at four other players, really two on the perimeter in particular. What a good job defensively. Quick feet from Smith. And an offensive foul called to Georgetown, which actually helped the Hoyas there. That's stopped the fast break. And once again, last time was a travel call. Notice the left to right shuffle, never crossing his feet and getting great body position and a terrific angle. Good job defensively. First foul on Churchwell. Team fouls are now five. Georgetown for Providence. A lot of changes. Simpkins is back in, and Michael Smith is out now for the first time for Providence. And another foul. The crew is going to be called here. And the little things too, Ted. Abdullah that time bringing it up about five feet before half court and choosing to stop there. Much better spot than crossing or getting yourself boxed into the corner on the sideline. So it's a little thing, but it broke the press for them. Another foul. The Providence has survived that eight to point flurry well. Oh, Troy Brown gets stripped inside. Good hands by Miku. And a three by Kevin Miller. Well, that's just making them pay. A tough one for Providence because they had an opportunity down low, but real good look from Georgetown's perspective, looking to push it up. Traveling. Like Providence attacking the middle. They're going right at the basket, but two in a row now unable to finish. Actually, two good things there, that the way Providence is attacking it and then also Georgetown breaking down but not giving up and coming right back to force turnovers. Friars, eight turnovers already. They only have seven points. Good release, the safety valve, the big guy stepping up. Oh, 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 close. Wow, that's a close one. Boy, we got to get that hand out of there. Abdullah climbed it off the glass. Saved into Georgetown, Joey Brown. Against Michael Brown. And a foul will go to the Providence Brown. Joey Brown hesitating a little bit. I think he had a little trouble getting it going here. Fumbled it just a little, but there's the fumble. It appears as if he's delaying. He picks up the foul and nearly put that one through. <laughs> Michael Brown's second foul for Providence. He's out. Trent Forbes there is in for the first time. This is uh, college basketball in the 90s. You can go dizzy trying to keep track of all the substitutions. <laughs> just forget it. You can just sub on the fly. I got you. There you go. <laughs> well, Joey Brown had uh, a rough night. You know, it's hard to win on the road when your experienced players don't produce. And St. John's the other night, Churchwell had three points. Brown had two. Setting up also Harrington back on the bench after what about a minute and a half on the floor. Maybe John Thompson got a little scared of that one play down there where the big guy had his arm tangled in. And Smith's back out there for Providence. Trying to cut the free throw line. Just the fact that he goes through and cuts in there. Somebody has to from the perimeter look at him. Boy, that was a nice effort by Simpkins. Almost saved that. It'll be Georgetown ball when we come back. The Hoy is up 16 to 7. We'll be back after these words from our local station. The big hand as he goes through the lane. Relax, guys. We got a pair now. Two times. I guess everything he does is fairly big, though, huh? Three uh, rebounds already for Harrington. Five points. He's uh, being interviewed now. For Georgetown. Uh, the worst part about being interviewed is you have to explain shots like that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but uh, he has said in the few interviews he's done since the turn of the, the calendar into the new year, it was always his fantasy to play here. And he considers it a great honor to follow in the, the Georgetown tradition of big men. We were joking with Ed Spriggs before the game. And our friend Rafford put Ed Spriggs in the forefront of that. That's right. There's Simpkins hitting inside. Well, that's one of the spots against his own, the free throw line, but you have to find the seam. And Simpkins is doing a great job. Nearly a backcourt. Not with the, so much in the air, but just about stepping on the line. Thrown away, turnover. Providence back. Well, the 
Seth Forbes down quickly. Simpkins was looking for the lob that time, but Abdullah did not go that trip. Rebound, Spencer. Churchwell, huh. spinning move on the baseline. Looked as if he was going to pass it out defensively to break down, had the baseline. And a turnover back to Georgetown. Barnes looking for a grab on the call beforehand, but it's a tough spot to be giving Smith the ball right there on the break, especially with a Georgetown running two and three men at him down low. We're under 10 minutes to play in the half here at the cap center. Georgetown up 18 to 9. Very deliberate set by the Hoyas. Now shot clock is at 12. Almost as if this set doesn't belong in this game with the pace. Yeah. It's like a timeout without calling it. That's right. <laughs> oh boy. That's tough because Providence gets the shot clock down to three, and then they're called for a foul. <laughs> I mean, that, that was something right there, right? Well, I heard when Steve was playing, he said his number's going to go up in the rafters like everyone else. So tonight, I guess he's right. <laughs> so let's take a look now at some of the highlights from those first few years with the Celtics, capped, of course, by the 81 championship. We played the Rockets. Roll it, boys. Drafted in the NBA by the struggling Boston Celtics, Bird was looked upon as the savior of their proud tradition. Forbes and Phelps on the floor at the same time, and that hadn't happened an awful lot for Providence in the conference. Not really, not until no, Tuesday night. Get rid of it. Way in the backcourt to Abdullah. Forbes up quickly, boy. They you can see the, oh, good rebound by Smith. You can see how he went after that ball on the floor also. He goes up high and down low very quickly. Really very good instance for the basketball. Forbes and Phelps just sit on that wing in the air and itching. Smith is on the offensive glass again. Look at him come. Terrific. Phelps. Tip. Finally a foul. Yep, Simpkins over the top. Providence going after the glass offensively. One of the problems Georgetown had against St. John's. See, Smith is one-on-one -on -one down low, so he's in good shape. But Jock ends up getting a hand on the basketball. And then Reed stepping in. Good effort defensively after they gave up that second chance opportunity by Georgetown. There were about eight or nine guys in the paint, though, going after the basketball. Yeah. But Rick Barnes is just really working hard on the to recapture championship glory though they would fall behind three games to one to the Sixers in the conference finals Bird would simply refuse to let the Celtics title hopes the shot locked on him. playing with ferocious determination he would lead one of playoff history's most dramatic comebacks as the Celtics clawed their way back to even the series at three the Sixers could only watch as Bird delivered the knockout blow. Bird coming to the left. Stop and pop off the glass. It's gone. Off the lead. 91 89. Bobby Jones is going to put the ball on the play. And the pass hits the top of the backboard. And it's over. They won three in a row. They came from three of them down. And they have won the series. It's all over. It's Bird had brought the finals back to Boston Garden. And now the Celtics look to raise the... Smith missing, ball knocked out, and it'll be Georgetown ball. Eric Hayward from UConn was player of the year in Louisiana last year. And you had both Kittles and Spencer also playing in the state. That's pretty good, not too shabby. Irving Church first appearance. Missed the shot. Up oh, on a step and a running start. Turnover's just killing Providence here in the first half. They really want a tempo up tempo game here if they can with the breaks whenever they get an opportunity to. Smith there trying to 
to get the ball to a little guy, just forgot to dribble it before he handed it off. Well, we're having a half that is following form. Neither of these clubs shoots very well. Green. minutes in the half, 19 to 9, Georgetown. One of those games in there. So often you try to keep it quick, get a quick sneak of the halftime stats and see how your numbers are stacking up. You don't no. even look at this one. <laughs> you don't. We're bringing the sheet to the locker room door and you send the manager over and say, no thanks. That's it. Just right to the trash pot. Providence still has more turnovers than points here. Slow down tempo sets here for Providence. They've been up tempo. Georgetown has been looking for it offensively. And a basket by Tony Turner, who is uh, at 47%, one of the better Providence shooters. So that big guy comes up, Harrington, just as a release. And it breaks it down very quickly with one big guy releasing. Tough look again. Nice catch by Smith. Boy, that's a big flurry. Five quick points from Tony Turner. And I think you hit it right on the head, too, with the catch, Ted. That saved him. Another turnover, just going after it, not trying to force a shot from a bad angle. A lot of guys would have tried to catch that ball, and if they come down with it, try to force up a shot. Ball taken away. Smith just stripped it from Spencer. As the second man in, he's been very, very strong defensively. Uh-oh. That's the third. Guess what? 6.35 left in the half also. Harrington picks up his third. The little guy getting the big guy to do what he wants. Little guy sees a breakdown. And look, getting his ball out in front. And all you're looking to do is not even so much control the basketball there, but take a gamble, take a shot, and putting him right on the bench. Boy, that's a... It's a painful foul for Harrington and for Georgetown because, you know, Lula's not a scorer. He's going in there, he may not have a lot to do with the ball if he gets it. Got to give credit, though, for using the body. Oh, big block. Terrific job. Don Reed. And Phelps hits a three. Getting a couple of breaks, Providence is. Nice job by Reed once again being a factor underneath with those second chance opportunities. Gives Providence a lift, and you can see it in their defensive effort right here. Eight straight Friar points. Most these Providence players were here last year when the Friars won by 23 at the Cap Center. Oh. Pass one way, cut the next. Joey Brown looking for a strip, didn't get it. Oh, and Turner went in the left side and missed. Ball knocked out, and it's going to come back to Providence after a timeout. But the Friars back in it, an eight-point run that has cut the Georgetown lead to two. Going after that rebound on the offensive blast, even get a second opportunity. Phelps has got the itchy fingers, hit a couple of threes. Good cross pass. Skip one play around the perimeter. Michael Brown caught inside. Finally, Smith is fouled by Joey Brown. And I think it's just the positioning. You see Brown, baseline, tough shot right there. That's not a pass. I think he was looking to shoot that ball. But because of the positioning, Providence is not out hustling Georgetown to the basketball because both teams are going out, out after it and moving, going after it aggressively. I think it's just the positioning that Providence has at the beginning of the set to get closer to the basketball. First point for Michael Smith, D.C. native out of Dunbar. Nine boards already. Averages 11 and a half a game in conference play. Look at that. Is that the... Perhaps the best game face in the league. Well, he's a little annoyed because the last couple of trips, Georgetown has been putting a little extra body on him, in his opinion. That's what Joe Linda just jumped in there to say to because he swatted at Millen to get away from him on the blockout. So they've been trying to focus on Smith to lay some meat on him if they can. 
Another trap. Looking for the half court if they can get it. Nice skip pass again. Millen knifing in, and he is fouled. They just ran the baseline all alone, Millen. All I remember, them 20-footers raining down on me, so. Body on him without And I always remember thinking, like, boy, you know, this white guy really can play, can't he? <laughs> um, Larry, um, I guess it's my honor in... Uh, representing all the guys behind me and some of the guys who aren't here, Terry Durod and Wayne Credlow, who were on the team also. Um, it's my honor to present you with this, um, what the hell is this? Uh, defensively. Back it off defensively, that's the sound like George Tepp. No, no, it's true. <laughs> they don't know what that means. But he better back off just a touch, though, because they do not need him picking up his third. You watch Brian, he's going to be careful with his hands. He's not to try not to get his hands caught. So. He's so active. Good catch by Smith. Now, see, now I ask you, you played. Now, to me, that's a, looks like that's another tough pass, because what is Smith going to do when he catches that ball? I agree 100% with you. Just the fact that we have to talk about him catching the ball, if you know the pass isn't on the money, well, you're right, when he gets it there, he's good. By the time he gets down to the floor, he has two people around him. Under four minutes now in the half, Georgetown by five. A little bit of a dark throw there for Turner. Well, that's a walk. Millen, the pressure, creating a turnover there as Millen got caught with an extra step. Providence continues to run somebody through the middle. Georgetown goes nowhere near at you. As you mentioned earlier, a little bit of a hook right there as it goes to the basket. But because he's not a factor to shoot the basketball, he has to look at one to bring some defensive players towards him a little bit. Bowman called for the foul. Try to guide him into the trap. Short. Nobody blocked him. See this again. See it, especially on the long shots that you forget to put a body on the shooter and you start cheating up the floor. Abdullah got in the lane and is wide right. At least he's looking for a shot though, going through. Gives a different look. So right there, he has to take that shot. He, I think Joey Brown even said, take that shot. Don Reed rebounds, stripped. Finally, it's Millen. Trying to get it up. They do. They've got a three on two if they push. Boy, that was a great, subtle play. Churchwell caught that ball up high and kept it there and just shot. Never, you're right, never brought the ball down in rhythm, too. Made it look easy. And that is not an easy shot. Churchwell has eight points. He has four baskets. Georgetown only has eight field goals in the half, and Churchwell has four. Makes it a lot easier playing the clean area if the guards, especially for Providence, are not looking to take the shot out there. Turner missed. Phelps crash. And another Providence foul. This will be the tenth on the Friars. Each time we'll get to at the other end. It also, Ted, makes it difficult, more difficult, to rebound the basketball in the offensive glass because Georgetown has the luxury of cheating in a little bit. If the guards for Providence do not look to shoot that shot, they can fall back at better defensive positioning, forcing Providence off the floor just a touch. Turner taken out. Troy Brown is back in Churchwell on the 10th foul, shoots two. 159 remaining in the half. Really starting to step up with his play. For class listing sometimes is deceiving. People look at Georgetown and say no seniors. Wow. But Brown and Churchwell really are. They've played so many games here.
Allen slapped at that while I was still spinning around, and Troy Brown's going to get credit for that hoop. It's hard to tell sometimes whether that ball had come out, but I, I thought this ball was going to come off the rim, mm -hmm. the way it was spinning. Let's see. Uh, might have been heading out off the front of the iron. Good call. Seven-point lead for the Hoyas. 135 in the half. Well, has a three. Oh. Nails it. And a bump to go with it. Michael Smith bumped him after he released. A late foul as Churchwell buried the three, and then he he helps blow the whistle. Churchwell does on this. Watch the, watch the reaction. The bump, and then all of a sudden it was a delayed reaction. He went to the floor. And Smith jumping at a three-point shooter. One of the things you don't want a big guy doing when he's way out on the floor. So Churchwell now has 14 in the first half. Solid overall play by Churchwell, doing just about everything perfectly in this half. Shooting, rebounding, passing, and diving. Well, it's a basic skills of basketball, right? That's it, all of them in a nutshell. Yeah, you know, but. I'll tell you what, you can't learn to dive going up in Jersey City. You dive a lot in that cement. That's it. Too much cement there for me. Churchwell now has called for his second foul. Ninth on Georgetown. Maybe that's why I'm not all there, though. Too much jumping in the cement. UConn back to here, I believe. Two points at the half over Florida State. The last trip. Also, Abdullah was not a factor to shoot the basketball, but it was a seam that was wide open. Joey Brown with his two fouls, not really playing tough defense, so Abdullah forced the action into the paint. Abdullah has made only two field goals in conference play. He's averaging a point and a half a game. And he's going to have some decisions to make, though, because the way it's being played against in the defense, they're giving him way too many opportunities that are wide open, Ted. So he's going to have to, to, to himself say, hey, I'm either going to have to force this thing as I did the last time or look to take a 10 or 12 foot jump or push it into the paint and pull up. Nine points, Georgetown edge. They go under a minute and a half. Mayhew hits for two. And the reaction that Churchwell got, he just buried his own three the last trip down. So a couple of Providence Friars run at him. Leaving McCoo in the backcourt, or in the corner, rather, for his jumper. Dula in that pain, trying to create the contact again. The ball stolen, Joey Brown out. Up for grabs. It's down for grabs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll come back to Providence on the arrow with 23.8. Well, if you haven't seen it yet, you've got to stick with us at halftime. Saturday Hoop Trail is a great recap of the past week in the Big East. We'll also have the Big East halftime report and a recap of our first half. Last shot here for the Friars. Rob Phelps looked over to the sideline, got the play. Well, better get into it quickly. He wanted it, came up shooting. Well, he's got to put it up, and he no, does. No good. good. No good. So the half over here at the Cap Center in Landover, not a good shooting half for either team, but a, a big four-point play by Churchwell down the stretch. Helps Georgetown open up an 11-point lead. We'll have halftime activities after the ball knocked away. Couldn't get to it, but kind of guided it out to the corner to Churchwell. We'll have to watch the whistles. Rick Barnes had a rather vociferous exit from the floor at the end of the first half. And uh, his feelings going to the stripes. Ball wrestled away, saved by Georgetown. Third hand to shoot. Always in the right spot at the right time so far today. Next pass, and it's going up. And Spencer fouled. So there's another possession where the shot clock gets down under five, and then Providence fouls. Happened a couple of times in the first half for Providence, and the frustration for Rick Barnes. The reaching in just at the last moment, but about 41 and a half seconds of pretty decent defense right there. Spencer without a basket. 
He's now three out of six at the foul line. Instead of Georgetown, too, that we talked about them being a very good defensive team in terms of the other team's shooting percentage, but they're allowing 67 points per game in the Big East now, 23 at the half of Providence. Just that highlights how tough a defensive effort has been going on for them. Ooh, that's well. oh, That's next Saturday's Hoops Real Highlight. <laughs> You've made the bloops. Great break, though, run by Georgetown. Yeah, yeah. Everything set up. Filled the middle of the floor very quickly. You know, Georgetown passively playing defense along the perimeters with Abdullah. You know, he made a good point when we were talking at halftime, Jim. Though Abdullah needs to do that. If nothing else, he's got Smith and Simpkins under there that can pull that ball back. Right, and see if they anticipate him shooting it. The problem with it when you're not sure if a teammate's going to shoot the shot, you don't really go in and the can't time your rebounding as easily. I mean, they'll go get the offensive glass, but he has to shoot the shot. And Joey Brown, we do the same thing for Georgetown. Now, Joey Brown's having a bad shooting run. Lately, but you see even there, he's going to put a shot up now and then to make sure that people pay attention to it. That, break it down a little bit and force the perimeter just out a little bit so you can slip that ball into the foul line area and get a numbers game. Another good collapse. Off to the races again. But who can't put it down? The deals it back. Turner blocks. Good stay by McClure, though, coming back. So that's just a breakdown for Providence, but they recovered pretty quickly with Turner. Simpkins, big rebound. There's the rebounding effort, though. Get a soft shot up there. It's an anticipated shot. It allows you to flow to the basket. The Providence scoring in the first half. Nobody, uh, actually, Michael Brown did have three fouls in the first half, and Smith now has three. Churchwell leading the way for the Hoyas. Harrington with three fouls. Western. And that will count the foul. And as slow as I am a foot pen, I think I could have intercepted that pass. That was right on the money. Wrong shirt, though. And that's a good, uncharacteristic mistake by Brown, and he compounds it here with his third foul. Yep, trying to go for the strip. Good little tuck away right there by Western, though. Second basket that he's had going strongly to the glass. Tuck that ball away in the opposite hip. Forced the guard to go find the basketball in the drive. Yeah, you know it. He's had a lot of minutes lately for Providence after being basically MIA for about a year and a half. Three-point play, five straight for the Friars. Back to their trap, looking for a trap, taking the time off the clock, and maybe force a quicker shot than at Georgetown once. The two for three. So there's a little breakdown defensively, Providence. That shot is a result of traps at half court. You come back and switch up your defense, but you're in a little period of time when you're not sure what spot on the floor you're supposed to be on. Franklin Western with seven points. The basket by Miku was the first for Georgetown in this half. Well, Churchill comes back, and the team that's not supposed to be Ray Shooting Club has answered Providence with back-to-back -back threes. Better find him once he runs the floor and sets up in the corner. Shows you how little I know about, too, because I was going to tell you, five points, Georgetown brought the ball down, and you were saying, you know, slow it down, get a good shot. I'm thinking it's got to go into Harrington, right? Exactly. I think it's a two threes in a row. Brown. Trailer is Othello, but he had it knocked away. Is that Abdullah there that time, or was it Western? One of them got the ball very, very low. Harrington running the floor, big man. Joey Brown with a nice feed. Abdullah. Miku missing a three, and here's Simpkins looking for Phelps. Gives it off to Michael Brown. Good extra dribble to draw the penetration. So Harrington and Simpkins have something going on. They've been talking trash to one another and banging and locking the arms and just about every trip they're together. A couple bumps right there. They're still, you're right, they're still talking. 
Now they're starting to talk with their arms, too. <laughs> Simpkins going to try to get that fourth foul. Can't get it. Doesn't get the hoop either. And the ball will stay with the Friars. And that will get us to a timeout. That is a shock. That last yeah. part of it, isn't it? Well, Othello didn't play. He only played 12 minutes in the first half. They may have gotten uh, used to playing without him there for a bit. He does not have a lot of shots down low. Little matchup zone right here. If the man's in their area, it's a man-to-man. -man, but when he leaves to play his own, he's hit by Simpkins there to keep it alive. Two things that you notice in the Providence offense. You mentioned that Gula doesn't shoot, look to shoot much. And Michael Smith rarely touches the ball unless he gets it off the glass. Exactly. He has to work for himself. Traveling. Turn it over. Back to Providence. When they run their sets, Michael Smith just stands at that low block and he rarely touches the ball. Here's the banging. Not too bad that trip, but once again, the arms tangling up just a touch. Oh, they just got Harrington. Fourth foul on Othella Harrington. So uh, was you, what you were pointing out, Jim, was watched by the stripes, and they just got Harrington for his fourth. 15-02 to be exact, Ted, when he goes out of the ball game with number four. And Georgetown up eight when Harrington leaves. So just five points for Othella in this game. Things went okay in the first half. Let's see if they can do it again in the second half here without him on the floor. Don Reed replaces him in the middle. Pretty tight once again. Defensive. Oh, just barely got rid of it. Phelps. Smith pulls his way. Simpkins banging away on the other side of the glass. Churchwell. That's his third foul. Now it's Simpkins and Spencer. Spencer taking the place of Harrington and being the recipient of a couple of bumps. To John Thompson is yelling about. Simpkins with the position down on the right. There's the first push. Spencer back. Keep an eye on the right on the right side. And it finally ends up with Spencer hitting the floor. And Providence throws it away on the inbounds. Turn it right back to Georgetown. The Hoyas got to be a little careful here. Harrington's sitting with four. Churchwell and Brown are both playing with three, and we still have a long way to go. Georgetown with the... Uh, there's two baskets, both three-pointers, in almost six minutes of this half. Pretty patient, though, this trip right here. Not looking to force. Waiting for a breakdown defensively. Scored by Churchwell, and Don Reed is on the back. That'll be the fourth Georgetown foul of this half. Just one foul against Providence. Pretty good patience offensively. And decent rebounding position for Providence on that first shot off. No problem getting points up in uh, stores today. Right? <laughs> Ford scoreboard clip. Win the ball. Belt is open. Good block out there. Georgetown with a good group block out, and Don Reed had the rebound. So that's where I think Providence has to recognize, too, who's on the weak side and get the ball and kick it over, because Phelps will take that shot. So if you have an open man, get it to him. Brown couldn't corral it, uh, but he blocks the pass. And Providence will keep the ball, but Brown with a great react to stop a fast break. Sure was. Terrific reflection going after the basketball. But watch his re reaction there going right after it again as it goes out of bounds. Quickness, instincts going after it. With the lob, Michael Brown. First basket for Michael Brown. Pretty look. Georgetown's lead down to six. Pretty look also, Ted. Simpkins cross court pass. Georgetown lopsided, coming to the strong side, going down on the defensive low blocks. I haven't really looked 
Smith to push the ball on the block. Really, all afternoon, Georgetown. The cool. Oh, look at Don Reed with the volleyball tip. Hank was about 12 feet out after setting a screen and followed the play. Get the hands up. You never know what's going to happen. Down hits a three. And it's open. Shoot it. That's what Rick Barnes, I'm sure he said that to the guards in the perimeter. The only way we're going to break it down defensively inside is to bring them out on the floor. So shoot the shots. Of course, he'll take his chances with Smith and Simpkins going after the basketball on the offensive glass if they miss. They run here by the Flyers and cut the lead to five. And now have the ball. Michael Brown. That's a step. Yep. Crossing over, going right to left. And that'll get us to another break. The Rick Barnes team took plenty of time. 11 and a half minutes. Rob Phelps gets too close. That is his second foul. Just the second against the Friars. Rick In Barnes. Excuse me, Ted. Rick Barnes looking at him and saying, back off a little bit. No need to do that. You're out 30 feet from the goal. Georgetown. Three baskets in the second half. Two threes and a tip in by Reed. And a complete reversal there of the numbers, too. This is where Georgetown, out of his half-court set, they've not done very well in the second half. Now, they haven't really been able to open anything up down low, except for when they've dribbled it down there. Missed a shot, go over the top. And that will be uh, Spencer's first foul, and the fifth by the Hoyas. Uh, John Thompson's going to have a... If this doesn't stop in a minute or two, he's going to have a tough call with Harrington sitting over there. Harrington went out with an eight-point lead for Georgetown. Now it's down to five. You bring the sneakers today? You may get some action. You may get a little run today. Yeah, nobody would ever do that to us. <laughs> Simpkins facing the hoop, knocks it down, and Providence has cut the lead to three. Once again, the strong cut to the basketball from Simpkins from weak side to strong side. Smith recognizing, but Simpkins cutting a seam, making it easy. And John Thompson's made his decision. That hoop got Harrington to the scorer's table. Drive, and what do we have? A foul against PC. On the pass off, though. I think it was Phelps along the baseline. That's his third. Watch Phelps' hands at the end of this play. See them start to come down. Gave up the baseline for openers. So Harrington is back now. It was a 7-2 run for Providence while he was out. But we still have 10-20 to play. All the time to go with four. Well, Brown creates contact. Well, one of the keys to going to the basket like that, you saw Joey Brown lead with his body. The body has to go first, look for a foul, and then toss the shot up. Now, that's an important foul. Michael Brown, who has done a nice job in the second half, just picked up his fourth foul. And he's going to come out. Abdullah Reed is back for Georgetown. And Abdullah comes back for Providence. But Michael Brown, during that little run with Harrington out of the game, did a nice job. Fresh legs out there, Ted. Okay. The ladies, both coaches have been utilizing their bench, rotating players in. Not been a good scoring game for Joey Brown. Three out of six at the line. Really hasn't been a great scoring game for anybody except maybe Churchill, right? That's it. First time's had a rough day at the foul line. Pick the spot. Somebody has to be ready to shoot. And he's ready. And Turner knocks down a three. And Providence has cut the Hoyas lead to one. Now, why do you, if you're Georgetown, John Thompson saying, why are my guys running at Abdullah, who won't shoot the basketball, and not going after Turner, who will? So a little breakdown, you'll, I'm sure you'll see an adjustment the next, next trip down, because that's not how John Thompson wants it, has not designed it that way. 
ten and a half minutes of basketball in this half. Georgetown has only scored ten points. Joey Brown. Oh, Abdullah. And let's see what we have. Well, it's not. That one it is Abdullah. Boy, that looked all ball. That one I'm not too sure about, Ted. I think Joey Brown forcing the action. Ball ball. I think if uh, Jody Sylvester had the benefit of that same replay, he would agree. Now, the reason he made the call, though, I believe, is because Joey Brown was doing that little bit of leaning and forcing the action. Sometimes it looks as if you're getting hit when it's an off-balance type shot. But clearly that time, Abdullah made a very good play in stripping the ball up high. And this time, Georgetown capitalizes from the line. Five points for Brown for that. Opens up a three-point edge again, but the Friars have shot their way back into the ball game. And we're going to get a foul here. Nope. It's out of bounds, says Jody Sylvester. Ball tipped off Smith's hand and hit out of bounds. Hit the support behind the backboard, and the ball comes back to Georgetown. At first look, it looked like it hit the side of the backboard, which would have been in play. But there's two pieces of rubber up there, and that's a good call because that is beyond the side of the basket. Othello back in the game. Harrington, Spencer, Churchwell, Brown, and Nkou line up for the Hoyas. Keep in mind, Simpkins and Harrington have been banging one another all afternoon. Good delivery. Oh, great help. Woo. And no reset on the shot clock. Turner with a big step in. Yeah. Boy, that one looks ugly, and Joey Brown got away with it. I was just going to say, can you do that with the ball and get away with it? I guess you can. It did look kind of very weird. Franklin Western hits it for two. In about the last three or four minutes, too, they've played well in the second half, Providence, but they really are starting to look more and more comfortable as the game goes on. Another great feed. And Harrington that time held off Simpkins. Exactly. He knows how to use his body down low. Somebody schooled him pretty well. Got to stay away. And Smith lays it in. So here we go now with our first second half flurry. All of a sudden, this point totals are starting to climb up on us here. Here's the step in by Harrington. Joey oh, he gets Simpkins on his back again. Good no call there. Harrington has to be careful that he doesn't try to go right through Simpkins on the offensive rebound attempt. There's a charge. Oh, that's a charge, absolutely. Yep. Very, very easy call there. If I could make it, it's easy. <laughs> How easy was it? <laughs> Teddy Robinson made the call. <laughs> Spencer second, a 16 foul. We have a timeout. It's a game, Georgetown by three. It's broken down a little defensively. Abdul is not going to look to shoot the ball from the outside, so you have to backpedal as a perimeter player. Don't let him get the penetration. But there's the penetration. It's much too late. Reed can't react that quickly because he has to step out into the lane to stop the layup. The foul as Harrington comes back in the game. The foul was on Reed, his second, 17. And Michael Smith, 54% foul shooter, tries to tie the game. The Georgetown has to stop Abdul from driving the lane, Ted, and also flare out to the shooters that are on the floor, like Turner when he hits a spot on the wing. This is the first tie of the game. Remember, Georgetown scored the game's first eight points. Fans have been pretty quiet to this point, really, but now warming up to the pass. Good step across by Harrington. Soft touch, no. Rebound, Smith. His ball. Oh, he, <laughs> he lets you know what a face he has. And Providence going for its first lead. Trying to get the ball of Simpkins against Harrington. Let's see if they can get it to him. Everybody kind of standing and watching there as Western hoisted up the shot. Joey Brown going into the big guys in the paint area, pulling one down. Lost Harrington, can't save it, turnover. 
Well, it would have been a good pass. I think Harrington was coming slightly up the lane, pushing the body up the lane, and then started just a touch back towards the baseline. Pass was just a little bit fast. Spencer out of the game now. Millen is in with Churchwell, Harrington, McCoo, and Brown. Abdullah and Weston, Turner Smith Simpkins. The Rosary may have to give Simpkins a look when he has Harrington one on one down low. Because Harrington has to back off. Simpkins goes right at him. Big rebound. Nice rebound by Kevin Millen. Good position down low. They're in the zone, so they have a chance of getting better defensive rebounding position. Good pull up though by Simpkins there to avoid the charge. The defense is starting to step up at both ends. Tie game here at the Cap Center. We're five and a half minutes remaining. The two flashes. Well, Smith has his 13th rebound for Providence. Simpkins with the ball. Let's see if he gets it. Yep. And Providence has its first lead. At least for the next two minutes, Ted, if that opportunity is, a, is open down there where you get Simpkins out of isolation, you have to go for it. Give it a shot. Churchwell missing. So the Friars by two. And here he goes, Smith. And then two Hoyas collide and travel with the rebound. What happened to Smith? He's over in the corner. Oh, he's okay. We just got, we just got a team greeting over there. You can't believe that he missed the monster jam. But it'll be Providence ball to come back. The Friars lead by two. Some unknown long-distance companies are promising you fax connections as fast as... Friars have their first lead, and it could have been four had Michael Smith been able to finish this. Snuck out ahead of the crowd. And... Uh, and Michael just kind of ran off in the runway there. He was so <laughs> embarrassed after missing that. He did disappear for a couple of beats there, didn't he? Boys in the hood are going to let him hear about that, I would imagine. Harrington out on the floor right now. Turner, Tony Turner, and the Friars lead four. And a confident Friar team right now. Nine-point Providence run. Very aggressive man to man defense, kind of passive, but basically the reason they're doing that is to force the shot out deep. Millen follows his own. Michael Smith is off for the races again. That's why they got the extra shot. Oh, Joey Brown steps up big for Georgetown. If Providence gets the ball that trip on the rebound, Michael Smith has a dunk, but he forgot about the basketball. Huge three for Georgetown. Fire leader one. Smith can't catch it. They had Churchwell harassing him. Brown accelerates to Reed, who can't put it in. And Smith clears for Providence. Another one of his traffic rebounds. And here we are with three minutes and change to play, and Harrington is sitting for Georgetown. Well, oh, that missed layup down there by Reed evens up the miss dunk by Smith. There's nobody within 10 feet of that duel. And Georgetown has it. It's right on the iron, though, Ted. You have to take it if you're not wide open. Well, that's such a diss right there. If you're a duel, you absolutely have to take it. The reach in again. And you don't see that in college basketball. Not only was he open, but nobody ever made a move to try to go out there. This is the sixth foul against Providence, 16 fouls. Harrington comes back at 2.46 remaining. Providence up a point. Abdullah of the Friars call for the foul. That is his fourth. Everybody's lined up as if it's a free throw. Joey 
Charlie Brown. Oh, oh man. Michael Smith. That had block written all over it. Ooh. And Michael, did I foul him? I don't know about this. I didn't think I fouled him. I know he had his hand on the ball. <laughs> Joey Brown very strongly trying to come through the lane. But there's the body before. Little knee kick. <laughs> He did get the ball up high, but he got the body on him down low. Fourth foul on Michael Smith. We're probably going to lose some people before this one is done. 2.40 remaining. Joey Brown's first foul shot ties the game, and now Providence takes a timeout. 2.40 remaining at the cap center. And we are tied at 54. And Western had a little bit of both going there. 11 points for Western. Billy Brown. Rebound. Look at Brown sneak in there to knock it free. And another 45 for the Hoyas. Reed also going after the basketball. But Joey Brown looking to aggressively take control. Third 12. He's got a quiet second half, but he runs another loose ball down. Joey Brown getting his hand on it again, Ted, to keep it up in the air. He's only 5'10", but he might be one of the best rebounding guards this time have seen in a long time. So quick, aggressive, goes after the basketball. 135, Providence by two. Third try for the Hoyas. And they miss again, this time Smith, who will not be denied, has his 14th, 15th rebound. Now let's see how they protect the basketball, but you know, there comes the trap. I was just going to say, Georgetown will upbeat a little bit defensively here to force you to take a quick shot, a bad shot, or just flat out turn it over. A little bit of a reach. Well, they're going to take time off the shot clock, Ted, but they still need another bucket here. We're under a minute now. Providence up two. And finally a foul by Millen. That's one of those flurries that I'm never sure I understand the trailing team. Now they ran 31 seconds off the game clock there and then fat. And by that point you'd probably be better off just letting them go ahead and see if they can score. I agree. I'm not so sure why that happened. Harrington back in for the offensive possession but you're right on the money. 57.3 is what's remaining on the game clock. Harrington is back in for the Hoyas. And Abdullah who's made two out of three from the line today. 56% coming in. And that's why they tried to foul him when they saw him with the ball. Huge rebound Lock, by Lockman. Smith. Whoa. Look at the face on Smith. What great, great reactions by Michael Smith. And what a manly, manly rebound of that miss foul shot. Well, that's the key also. Not only going after the basketball, but you cannot on a miss free throw from Georgetown's end give up the basketball. I love to watch Smith play. He's just so much fun to watch. Another guy who struggles at the line, though, 54% in the Big East and 55% on the season. So consistency at the line, but not a good free throw shooter. And this is a one and one, 53 seconds. Soft shot, had a little bit left on it. <laughs> that's, what I, that's why I love to watch him. He's, he doesn't hide his emotions very well. Seems to really enjoy playing the game, though, doesn't he? 16 rebounds for Smith today. That is more than the top three Georgetown rebounders combined. Good shot, though, for a double possession game. Churchwell clears a three-point prior lead. Shot clock runs about eight seconds ahead of the game clock. Brown in. Got contact out of the game. We talked about it before. Joey Brown with the ability to use his body. Score is in the lane. Watch how he forces the body to our left looking at it. See the body hit first, shot second. As the score going down through the lane, number one, you want to stop the clock. Number two, you want to get to the free throw line and then get the shot to go down if you can. And he gets it all three. The foul on Simpkins, and we have Providence taking timeout at 41.5 to play, and Joey Brown shooting for a tie. 
Every business has its own language. The fourth represents the party of the second part. One just sub -part. And uh, their lead, though, in jeopardy. Joey Brown with 13 points already heading back to the line, where Joey Brown is 69% for the year in league play. And he's trying to tie it. There is the game scenario. Brown has scored 11 of the last 13 Georgetown points. And we are tied. Now, Jim, does Providence play for one? Why not? <laughs> That's the way I look at it. If I'm, if I'm the Friars right now, I go into overtime. Yeah. It's the worst thing I want to get out of this possession. I don't know if Georgetown is going to let it get to that point, though, with an occasional trap if they can get one. So this is the matchup they'll take, Providence Simpkins. He handles the ball pretty well against Harrington out on the open floor. There's no reason to not go into overtime or win the game. Wow, that's a long one. Loose. Nice timeout Time call. Out. Joey Brown. Good timeout. Georgetown at 2.6 seconds. Tie game, their ball, they'll be about 80 feet away. Well, shot selection down the stretch is the big key. I don't have any problems with going for a quick shot, a long shot, but there's way too much time on it. That shot should go up with four seconds or less because by the time that shot comes back on the rebound, there isn't any time left. We've seen crazier things happen in less time. 2.6 to be exact right now, Ted. Well, we were talking before the game with the lead official, Jody Sylvester, who worked the game at Illinois Thursday right. night, where Illinois inbounded with 1.5 seconds from under, the, under their basket. Threw the ball three-quarter court and got a winning three-pointer. Exactly. Give some credit also to Joey Brown on the floor yeah. just then. Presence of mind. Just catch the ball off the floor, call a timeout. Well, there's the game reset. If you look a at that, foul is a one and one for you Providence. If you look at the bottom there, Ted, with the possession to Providence, if in fact Joey Brown couldn't call that timeout and you get a tie game, tie uh, jump ball right there, they get the ball down their end of the floor for another shot at a desperation shot. So, oh, they're going to inbound baseline. Harrell will throw it in. And the prayer by Joey Brown. Is not good, and we have overtime at the Cap Center. Tied at 57. Georgetown led by 11 at the half. But on their home floor, the Hoyas have seen Providence take them to OT. You know, 10, 12 minutes of this ball game. Their confidence level seems to get better and better as the day wore on. Key thing, though, Rick Barnes is trying to get his team there. I don't think he wanted that long shot, but the end result was okay for Providence because they had the last possession really up until the last two seconds, so they want to go to overtime, worst case scenario. So they did get to that particular point, even though Joey Brown got a shot at a three-quarter shot. Providence has played one overtime this year, and they lost it at home to Rhode Island. It's the only non-conference loss the Friars suffered this year. First OT for Georgetown. You see them be very, very patient with this one. Long rebound. Out of bounds. Traveling, actually. Traveling against Turner. So Georgetown will get it back at a new 45. Millen letting rip with the outside shot. May have been a little body bump. Yep, he took the extra step, though. Fresh shot clock for Georgetown. Harrington wants the basketball. He's stepping in nicely against Simpson. So Michael Smith staying away from him. Michael Smith has four also. Churchwell. Good solid all afternoon. And a foul here. Churchwell had 14 points in the first half, only three in the second. And uh, Florida State 
into Storrs, and they win at Gamble by 12 over the Huskies, who have really hit the skids, uh, really timed with the injuries that have plagued Scott Burrell. So Millen to the line, shooting two on the 10th shoot Providence foul. Connecticut goes to nine and eight on the season. And Don Reed back in, Harrington out. John Thompson will try to make that defensive switch whenever he can to protect Ophella. Yeah, he's been around a long time, John Thompson, so he knows this game inside out. Every opportunity. Could be Providence call. Good call. Churchwell hit it. I guess, Jimmy, you got to look at John Thompson, too. you got to look at this. a challenge for his team because Othella has not been a factor today. Really has not been the usual factor he is. Can they win a game without him? Well, I think the fact that Joey Brown has stepped up also trying to take control of the game. I thought he played a terrific floor game, both defensively and going after loose balls, offensively tips. But you're right, they have to answer without him in the lineup offensively, unless they get a, a foul of some sort or a violation here. Twelve seconds on the shot clock. Don't to get to that dangerous time zone right now. Oh, big move for the basket. Ball knocked away, out of bounds to Georgetown at 3.20 in the overtime. Here comes the substitution. Harrington back in. Abdullah going to the basket. A little hard on the layup. Michael Brown back in for Providence. Abdullah out. So Georgetown up one with the ball. Joey Brown with 12 points in the second half. Georgetown only scored 23 in the second half. Brown had 12 of them. A big screen. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go off it, pull up for a jumper. Oh, that's up Churchwell, and he shuffled. Yep, sure did. Thinking about the three, decided to drive, but the feet didn't obey. One point, two minutes in the OT. Pretty much the story of this game. Huh? Yeah, it has been. They might have played a 730 to get to 100. <laughs> and almost unnoticed, John Thompson gets Harrington out of there quickly, doesn't he? Turner. Tony Turner has 12 points for the Friars, and they have the lead at 235 in the overtime. Billy Brown went for the steal on that one, just barely missed it. If he ever got his hands on that one, he would have had a layup. Another step. That's a good call, though. You can see the shuffle. It's an up and down, quick shuffle. That's the catch. One, two, three. Yep. That's a good that call. Is, that is a good call. Can't take a running start in this game. Well, it would be a lot easier playing this game if you could. <laughs> so now let's see if the Friars milk the clock. With the ball and the lead. Now I can tell it's a good call also when you look at John Thompson's reaction. He didn't really put up much of an argument also, Ted. But Simpkins lost it on the baseline. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of opportunities at both ends here under two minutes to win this game. Rebound Providence. We have played three minutes and 15 seconds of the overtime. Providence has one field goal. Georgetown one foul shot. And there's another foul. Reed hammers Western at 139. Western also has done some good things on the floor today, this time using his body. A nice little soft cut through the lane. Basic bounce pass. Look, and get your body out in front. Hey, okay, come on, come on. We got two shots back. Harrington right, back in. Western in the league, 40% from the line. There's is a lone attempt today. Well, as a team, they only hit 63% of their free throws. Another sore spot for Providence, but throw the numbers out the window in the last minute and a half or so. If you can stick them. They're the last in the league in that category. In fact, Weston has not been in the line much this year, but he is at three out of three today. He was only two for six at the line all year. 
big set from both ends. There's that jumper off the screen I talked about the last possession for them. And a crash foul, and Churchwell has his fourth. Fourth on Churchwell, and this will be two at the other end for the Friars with 1.28 remaining. Well, Providence can win this basketball game at the free throw line if they're up to it. Georgetown knows that if they don't score points, they have to send them right to the line every trip. Well, Jimmy played 23 and a half minutes of basketball since halftime, and Georgetown has scored 24 points. So if he knocks these down, it's going to be tough to make that up. Yep, and that's what the Friars had just about at the half, right? They had 23 at the first half. So it's been a kind of a duplication for both teams in the opposite direction. Turner 73% at the line, shooting two. I think they can say this is not the most intimidating venue for a visiting player. So if PC gets any break here, it's that these kids step up here and it's not uh, a small bandbox gym with people throwing things and waving at you. Like Notre Dame, huh? Your old alma mater. What's that school in North Carolina? What's that, Duke? They probably do the same thing. Missed one. Uh, that's a miss that the Georgetown could use right there. Down four. Have to go quickly, but they have to make sure they're good selection. Miku is way short. Turner rebounds. That's not a good selection. Nope. Watch for the foul. Simpkins, good decision there. Didn't force it. Working down. Oh. Well, you throw that ball up that long in the air, anywhere near Joey Brown, and you are really rolling the dice. That's exactly right. It doesn't even have to be that high, right? Just that cross court. He nearly got away with tipping that off Michael Brown also. Georgetown, I think, going to foul pretty quick here. Joey Brown going for a steal. And now Millen fouls at 55. It's a four-point lead for the Friars. And now freshman Michael Brown will head to the line. And they have, he only has this season as a track record, but this is the best foul shooter they have. Michael Brown is perfect in the conference. 15 out of 15. See? That's why you toss those numbers out the window. Right. But they wish I'd do that, don't they? <laughs> 55 seconds. Still, though, Georgetown within two possessions. Right, still plenty of time, though. And they still have plenty of fouls to give. And that's all you're hoping for, but you have to get a good shot off. There's Harrington. Oh, block. Turner up. Harrington. In there, no, still nothing for Georgetown and a rebound by Turner. Well, Turner came very, very close to picking up a foul, but he was a hair away from it and stayed with the play and went up after the basketball after the miss. And that's a huge flurry because not only has Providence got the ball, but the church well has fouled out. Now watch Turner coming up, stays away. Do you see how he moved his body back about six inches? Still went up for the block and then responded by going up after the miss. And Hoyas Robert Churchwell has fouled out 14 points in the first half, but scoreless in the last 21 minutes of the game. And here's Turner back at the line. One for two today. That's the one big one, but this is the real this big one right here. At 34 seconds. And a six-point lead. Georgetown still has to be ready to rebound the basketball here. If you know that Simpkins and Smith are going to go after it. Just as I say that, Smith runs the other way. <laughs> Joey Brown. Did Mellon save it? Nice job. Simpkins. 
as it slammed off his leg out. 27 seconds, though, but seven points the lead for the Friars. Harrington. No, a lid on the basket stays for Georgetown. Joey Brown with a little shove. Well, this is amazing, Jim. The Hoyas have not have scored one point in this overtime. One point. That is a shock. You have to work to do that, I think. Yeah. Well, you have to work defensively also. Providence did a good job. Stepped up in the overtime. Just as this game went the whole way through, that beginning of the game, Rick Barnes really had problems on his hands because the first half, as we talked about, you just want to forget it. Shooting horribly from the floor, scoring 23 points. Second half didn't start out great, but it got better and better as it went on. And now in the overtime, just stepping up big time. 21 seconds, Michael Brown missed his second foul shot of the overtime. Nine straight points for Providence after Georgetown got the first point of the overtime. And Providence up with a steal. And they should be able to kill the clock here. Rick Barnes is going to win his first overtime game in the Big East since he's been at Providence. He was 0-7 in overtime, but the Friars win it for the second year in a row. They come into the cap center and win, and today they do it by coming back from an 11-point halftime hole. Well, it's just a terrific job by Providence. Shaky at the beginning, confidence level very, very high. Pretty good effort by a few guys on the floor today. Turner, Michael Smith going after the glass. Terrific job, and they really had to fight hard because Georgetown played some good defense early on. But the Hoyas could score just one point, just one point in the overtime session, and Providence wins it 66-58. to Providence now 3-7 and seven in the conference, 10-8 and eight overall. Georgetown is 5-5 five and five in the league, 12-6 and six overall. Along with Jim Spinarco, this is Ted Robinson, our final score in overtime. Providence 66, Georgetown 58. The preceding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production. U.S. Air. Every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Coming up tonight in Providence, Rhode Island, the Friars begin a critical stretch of three straight conference home games, and the Redmen try to continue their surprising run at the Big East Conference Championship. We welcome you to the Civic Center in Providence. Along with Dom Perno, I'm John Sanders, and Dom, this is it. This is the time of year you got to make a move. A little over a month ago before the tournament begins, and it's anybody's race right now in the Big East. It is. You have a good couple of weeks, you're right in the hunt. I think this has been the, the most interest pertaining to any team, you take a look at, this, at the standings, John. You know, here's Providence. They're like down at the bottom. They're favored in tonight's ball game. It's absolutely crazy. And that is almost unheard of as far as Big East play is concerned. These are two of the best rebounding teams in the conference. The Johnnies had a little edge the first time, and they will look inside once again tonight. There's no doubt about it. Chanel Scott and Lamont Middleton are two wide bodies for St. John's. They've done it night after night after night. The last time Providence played, both had big games. They'll look to do it again this evening. Michael Smith did not have a big game. He got in foul trouble, had only two points, but both he and Dickie Simpkins picked it up against the Hoyas. Against the Hoyas, Smith 16 boards, amazing. And Dickie Simpkins, he can do it every night. He just got it all together, and that, that tandem can be very effective. Of course, the one thing that the Friars need to do tonight is to keep those numbers on the scoreboard low. Exactly, and if you give St. John's opportunities, they'll take it. They'll push the ball up the floor more than they ever have, John. So you, you got to stick the D to them immediately. We're in Providence, Rhode Island, set for Big East basketball. We'll have the starting lineup for St. John's and for the Friars of Providence after this word from your local Big East Best guard. Don't leave home without it. 
Last month, the Johnnies won by 10 at Alumni Hall, but we're in the Civic Center in Providence tonight, and for tonight's nationwide insurance starting lineups, check the yellow pages for the nationwide insurance agent nearest you who just might be Steve Gollin of Cranston, Rhode Island. The public address announcer here at the Civic Center is Ray Bagley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Providence Civic Center and Big East Basketball. Tonight, the Friars play host to the Redmen of St. John's University from Jamaica, New York. Let's meet your starting lineups for tonight's game. For the Redmen of St. John's University, playing at God, a senior from New York, New York, number 11, David Kane. For the Friars... 